Well, I promised you it was coming, and it's here. Don't go away. Hey everybody, it's Paul from Fat Guy Productions coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And yes, indeedy do. When I released the video on the, uh, the model build for the Boot Hill Express, I told you, like I did with the fire truck, I was going to come back and do a vignette for it. So, let's get to it. Okay, so I'm sure you remember the Boot Hill Express from not too long ago. And you might also remember, while I was building it, I uh, told you about the skeleton figure that came with it. And I mentioned that I was going to bypass on building it in that video and, and do it here as part of the, the vignette for the Boot Hill Express. So here I have the parts for Mr. Skeleton. Uh, toting his six-gun uh, shooter and his uh -huh. ten-gallon hat. Uh -huh. And uh, I'll begin by freeing him from the sprues using a pair of sharp sprue cutters. Uh, and following all the typical uh, model-building norms, he'll get a once-over with the razor knife uh -huh. to remove any flash. And yeah, he, he was kind of flashy. So uh, he's going to get a once-over and a little bit of scraping and... And then we'll start to assemble him. Uh, he's kind of fragile, so we're going to move carefully because we don't want to break him. And uh, I'll be assembling him just using my Tamiya Thin Cement. <clears throat> All right, with Bones Jones all assembled, I can go ahead and set him to the side. And we'll get back to him way down the road sometime. How I was going to do this uh, was a bit of a dilemma, but I finally settled on using my trusty uh, shadow boxes I get at Hobby Lobby. They make fantastic bases uh, for your dioramas and scenes and stuff like that. They, they look good and add a really finished touch to your projects. But uh, I was facing a, a bit of a problem with it this time in that I, uh, I was going to have a lot of terrain that was going to raise up above the level of the frame. And so I really actually thought about uh, just tr cutting it all uh, nice and flush and sanding it, sealing it, and painting the edges and using that for the uh, outside borders. But instead I opted to go ahead and, and revert back to my, uh, my, my shadow box frame and I decided to break the fourth wall, I believe it's called, in, in Hollywood, Mel Brooks was really famous for this. Uh, breaking the fourth wall, I'm, I'm thinking is what it's called. And if you think back to uh, Blazing Saddles, um, Headley Lamar's in his office trying to figure out how to take over Red Rock, or uh, Rock Ridge, that is. And he's saying, uh, but how? Why? And he's looking right at the camera at the time, and he goes, why am I asking you? As in the audience. So he reaches out through the camera and breaks that, that invisible barrier that separates the audience from the movie, and that's what that's called. Well, I'm going to do the same thing with my diorama. Uh, I did it in the fire truck diorama, and I'm going to do it here, where part of the scene spills out over the boundaries of this frame. So uh, I, that's what I decided I wanted to do. And that was the, the final deciding factor that made me decide to go ahead and go with this. So I picked up a frame that was about the size I would want. And I began by starting to gut all of the stuff from the uh, inside of it. I don't need any of it. The glass is gone. Those little uh, holder strips are gone. All the nails are gone. All I need is this, this wood boundary here. Alrighty, the R she is ready to go, and uh, I can now go ahead and just put that uh, to the side. I won't need it for a while. Uh, but, uh, you know, I told you all the other stuff was junk. Well, that is true, but save the glass for just a second, because we're going to use that to cut the foam core base that we're going to put into that frame. So that way we don't have to do a bunch of measuring or anything like that.
Okay, this is a very high density uh, foam used for insulation. Um, it's sometimes pink, sometimes blue, and you can get it at almost any home, uh, home store like uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, or what have you. Um, mine happens to be pink. It's usually sold in 4 by 8 foot sheets, but they almost always sell a small panel of it, and so I buy it like that. Now I'm just going to go ahead and lay the glass down on the, the panel and use this sharp uh, uh, extending knife so that I can go ahead and uh, score out the shape and then cut it out. Uh, and it'll cut out really nice and smooth. This works great. Just make sure you don't slice off a fingy. After cutting out the base, I kind of sketched out what I wanted, and I'm going for sort of like a wash type thing here. And so then I also cut out a bunch of parts from uh, for the uh, terrain, for the elevation. And I used my razor knife to get the basic shapes. And then I took a hot knife and just kind of carved them roughly into a, a, a more of a terrain-like shape. And here I'm just going to use a little bit of wood glue uh, to glue these pieces down onto the base. Uh, any kind of a, a normal glue is going to work fine here. You know, your, your regular old PVA, Elmer's, stuff like that. Uh, this wood glue bottle was sitting right there, so I went ahead and used that. But almost anything is going to work fantastic here. Uh, an important thing to remember here is uh, two things. First, uh, you can see uh, in the boundary of the base piece a score line. I made that because that's where it fits into and underneath the the base, the, the frame that it's got to go into. So I need to stand off away from there so it will slide up into the frame nicely. The next thing is you have to make sure that your terrain is laid out to fit the model that you want to put in here. So I indeed kind of set the uh, um, the uh, Boot Hill Express onto the base before I sketched out these squiggly lines and made sure that it was fitting uh, just fine. I can see that you're worried that this absolutely looks nothing like the desert. Um, but it will. Right now, all we're doing is just kind of blocking it in, and so you don't really need to sweat it right now. All we're just trying to do is just, just get some general uh, shapes in here. Now, also, I want to, at this point, just tell you that uh, this desert scene for the Boothill Express is not my authentic idea. I saw it somewhere else, uh, the Boot Hill Express sitting in a desert with a tree and a hangman's noose, and I loved it. Now, the, this version is my version with the wash and stuff like that, but the general concept was from somebody else. I really wish I, I remembered their name or could find it again so I could give them proper credit. I can't, but uh, somebody else's concept, just my execution of it. Okay, so with this lighter, we can really start to give the terrain some some shape and some uh, uh, dimension and realism. And all I'm doing is just briefly running it across the surface to soften things and kind of shape them into a, a, a more natural appearance. Uh, just be careful you don't start a fire. And if it does start to smoke, make sure you don't inhale the smoke because... This is certainly not going to be anything good for you to breathe. And you don't need to worry about it too much. You, you know, it's going to get buried under a couple million layers of, of other stuff. You know, it's just uh, trying to, you know, give yourself a head start on getting this to look the way you want it to look. Now using a little propane handheld torch, I can go ahead and torch the bottom piece and give it some texture and dimension. Um, because, you know, it wouldn't be nice and flat like it was. So we're going to just kind of roughen that up and uh, maybe hit any other spots that we feel like need a uh, little extra attention here. Now it's time to break out a air drying clay called DOS. This stuff is actually pretty cool. Um, it's very soft and pliable, easy to work with. 
uh, a little messy and gummy, thus the gloves. Um, but really, it's it's a very nice product. It does come with a sealing tape on it, which is kind of a cool thing. But I still went ahead and when I was done and I threw it into a Ziploc bag uh, so it wouldn't dry up. But um, So you just reach in and pinch some out. I, I grabbed a few clumps and just tossed them over there and just started to work them into the, uh, into the scene. Stuff is great. As you're pressing the clay in and smoothing it down, uh, it would not be unreasonable to dampen your finger, but I didn't find it necessary. Uh, you know, it really does a really good job as it is. Just kind of smooth it in. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect because there's still plenty of layers uh, to go on top of this. So really all we're just trying to do is, is build some transitions. And there you have it, really. Uh, the the basic shape of our vignette is, is pretty much done now. Now it's trying to make it look like a piece of desert. Okay, after applying the, uh, the clay and letting it dry, we can go ahead and uh, seal this whole thing up. And for that, I just used some Vallejo uh, gray paint. Now, gray is not a very desert color, but if you alter colors as you build this up, if you have a thin spot or a spot where you can see through, it's just going to add depth to the entire project. So mix and match your colors going closer and closer and closer to the final sandy color you want at the end. But underneath, don't shy away from using uh, grays and and dark browns and things like that. It works fine and we're just really sealing things here. With the paint dry, I've gone ahead and mixed up some PVA glue, which is really just Elmer's, Elmer's all-purpose glue, and some water to uh, make it a little uh, easier to spread about. Um, just a healthy dose of it, because I'm gonna have to cover the entire scene with this. I also have it sitting on a uh, some butcher paper because this is going to get messy. So basically we're going to go ahead and cover the entire scene with the uh, the glue mixture and then we're going to go ahead and start coating it. Okay now that everything is coated I have a shaker filled with some uh, plain old beach sand and what I did is I took the sand and I uh, uh, filtered it out by running it through a couple different sizes of uh, uh, baskets until uh, I had nothing left but, you know, some fairly fine-grained sand. And so I'm just going to generously coat the entire base with the sand, not worrying too much. You don't got to uh, get every little nook and cranny. Just just coat it, okay? And you, you can see it's it's fine enough that you can see the the other layer behind it. It none of it really matters at this point. Uh, just get a good coating of the sand uh, on the base, and then we'll put the next product on here. Okay, so that looks good for the sand. And now we're going to turn to another uh, interesting product. This is just a sand-colored tile grout. Yep, absolutely, just like you buy at the home store. Uh, for doing tile floors or something, just find a nice sandy color, fill a shaker, and now we're going to just start sprinkling this all over the uh, the, the diorama. And what's going to happen is the tile grout will fill in a lot of the gaps where the sand didn't take, and in some areas it's going to blend and you'll get a little bit of both, and uh, it, it's going to give us a really nice start to uh, our base, uh, our desert base. Okay, now we're going to be applying a homemade mixture of scene glue. It's going to kind of glue everything down, but after it dries, you're really not going to be able to, to see it. And it's simply uh, one half uh, uh, matte medium by Liquitex. It's called matte medium. And one quarter water, uh, distilled water is best. And then one quarter of 70% isopropyl alcohol. And you mix that up nice and good. And then, here's the sad news, you need to let it sit somewhere undisturbed for about a week. And what's going to happen is a bunch of these binders and stuff are going to settle to the bottom, and then we'll carefully pour off the liquid off the top, 
and discard the binders. We don't need those, okay? Okay, here I have some silicone molds of rocks uh, made by Woodland Scenics. And uh, I took a little modeling plaster, mixed it up, filled the molds, let them dry. And now I'm demolding all these rocks. And then I'll put them into a container. And we're going to use those as the major rock formations in our, our scene. So we've got some long shale-like pieces and then a bunch of uh, small random type of rocks. And so we've got a nice variety. We can make as many as we want. Okay, so before getting ready to glue the uh, rocks in place, I made a little bit of a, a paste out of Liquitex modeling paste, some sand, and some paint. And I stirred that together into kind of like a, a paste type thing. Now I'm just going to kind of place my rocks on the scene, just kind of roughly by eye, and put them all out there and try and figure out what looks the best. You're going to note that I'm going to have to bring in the star of the show, the Bootle Express, uh, because we've got to also make sure of our clearances and how the vehicle's going to sit and look compared to all of this stuff. So, you know, uh, a little trial and error here and figure out where everything has to go. It's important to try and be as random as possible. Uh, you, you know, things in nature are not perfectly aligned, so... Uh, try to be very, very random here. Uh, don't fall into the trap of doing a pattern. And once you've got them in the places that they go, just glue them down one at a time using the paste that you made earlier. You know, just smear a little on the bottom and stick them down to your diorama. Okay, so while the rocks are drying, I can also go ahead and paint the uh, river bottom. Uh, a nice, deep, dark, almost blackish brown. Okay, once everything here is dry, we can go ahead and start to prep the river bottom. And I'm going for that nice cracked look you get in the desert where it's, you, you know, sometimes wet and then dries out and the, the desert bottom crackles. So what we're using is a stuff called crackling paste by a company called Golden. Uh, I got it online, and I'll put a link down below for it. Basically, you're going to just smooth the layer all along the river bottom. Uh, you don't need to worry too much about the transitions at the edge because we're going to treat them with a little glue and a little sand and a little uh, um, uh, uh, grout. So, you know, don't sweat it too much. Just go ahead and put it down. Uh, the thicker you put it down, the bigger the cracks will be and the longer it will take. Uh, the, the cracks can take up to three days to form. In my case, it was a, just about an hour, but I didn't go all that thick. So I just kind of smeared it down, smoothed it out as best I could, and then let the magic happen. Okay, so here you can see just about what it's supposed to look like, the finished product. And now there's nothing we can do but sit and wait for the cracking to happen. Okay, so now it's on to the hanging tree. And uh, uh, to be perfectly honest, I searched everywhere, high and low, for the perfect tree and couldn't find one, so I decided to make my own. So what I'm doing here is I am taking the best parts of tree branches and I'm making them into one big tree, uh, a hanging tree. So I found a, a base that had a great shape that I liked, but you know the, the, the ends of the tree branches can't just end. They have to transition to smaller and smaller and smaller things. And so how do you do that? You take smaller branches and different pieces and using uh, a little bit of super glue medium uh, viscosity and a little bit of baking soda we can put some uh, of the super glue down sprinkle it with baking soda and it will hold our branches together so we're really building a tree from a tree just like that now i'll go back and i'll put super glue all the way around the new branch and more baking soda. Now, yes, it does leave a little unsightly blemish, but it's nothing really to write home about, especially when the baking soda is saturated with 
the super glue. Uh, but you can uh, just dab that down with a little bit of paint, uh, give your tree a little bit of a wash, and you're going to be in business. The important thing is not every branch needs to come to a taper, uh, especially if you're going to have uh, parts of the tree on the ground and stuff. You know, old dead trees like this, the branches are always falling off. So you can have some that end abruptly. You can have some that come to, uh, uh, you know, narrow down. You know, just whatever looks good in your heart is going to be fine. Okay, so I went ahead and drilled a small hole in the base of my tree now that it's done. And I'm test fitting a uh, toothpick into it to make sure it's going to go far enough in. Uh, once I'm happy with that, I can go ahead and put a little of my uh, super glue inside the hole. And then I'll glue that toothpick in and that'll uh, give me some added support as I uh, put the tree into the scene. So a little glue, shove the toothpick in, and we're in business. Now we can go over to our diorama, figure out where we want it, how we want it positioned. Once we have it kind of lined up, it's just a matter of stuffing it in there. Now later we'll go ahead and take a little bit of modeling paste and some sand and some paint and make a little gummy product that we can uh, kind of put around the base of the tree to make sure that it blends in nicely with the rest of the scene. And here you see I'm just test fitting some of the the wood scraps. The, you know, because like I said, you know, sometimes you're going to have pieces that fell off this tree. And so we're going to figure out where we want to put those. Um, but I won't go ahead and uh, put the, the paste down around the bottom of the tree until later. Okay, so we can go ahead and put the tree off to the side for now, and here's the base, and you can see how nicely my riverbed is cracking up for me. Um, boy, I'll tell you what, it, it just gives an amazing look. So, okay, while uh, we've got it in front of us, I've mixed up a little uh, P PVA glue and some water, and I'm just brushing it onto some of the thin spots uh, where I don't have uh, good coverage of sand and grout and I'm going to address those now so uh, I'm just kind of applying this uh, glue mixture everywhere I think I need to thicken things up and I'm using it to kind of bevel in the riverbed where it's cracking so you see I'm just kind of uh, dabbling it along the edge of the cracked surface so that it will kind of all blend in and transition nicely Okay, with the glue in place, now I will go ahead and give my, uh, my scene uh, a sprinkling of fine beach sand. Get that down there, and of course, then I will follow it up with the grout to fill in any, any weak spots. And, you know, I'm just kind of angling it for my convenience to make sure that, that I can get to where I need to go with this. And here, of course, comes the grout. And, and you don't need to be careful with this. I mean, it's a desert. It's it's not structured. You know, sprinkle it on there. It's not a big deal. And then if it's in a place it doesn't need to be, we'll just shake it off or we'll, we'll touch it up. But, you know, don't be afraid of it. Just put it on. Anytime I want to lock something down, um, even though it's got uh, some glue underneath it, but if I want to really protect it and really lock it in there, I'll use my scene glue uh, and just dribble that on there. And I found that it, it likes to stand a little bit too much. And so I always kind of come back and I'll just pat it down with a, with a nice big brush really softly just to help spread it around and make sure everything is equally coated and it's soaked in. Okay, it's really time to start to make this look like the desert. This thing has sat overnight. It is nice and dry. Everything is locked in pretty good. And so now it's time to give it a unifying layer of paint. And for that, I'm just mixing up uh, uh, some Vallejo uh, paints. 
a little dark brown and a, a little bit of a sand color and thinning that down with some water and then I'm going to just turn to my trusty airbrush and I'm going to airbrush the entire scene sans tree and get it all to be the same unified color. So you remember how we painted the base originally gray and then our rocks are kind of white and then we've got kind of a sand colored sand and then a even creamier colored grout and so we have all these different colors and I'm applying one unifying color over the top but all of the stuff that's underneath it is going to show through just enough to bring us highlights and details and, and give us enough, enough depth. You remember when we painted the bottom of the river stream dark? You notice down in the cracks how dark it is down there? Well, that's why. So there is a method to all that madness. Always make sure you're wearing your mask. Take care of yourself. Okay, so I'm feeling really, really good about everything. So now it's time for a few details. First, I, uh, I have to look this up on the internet, but I had to figure out how to tie a noose. So I tied a noose out of some uh, one oh strand of a piece of hemp cord and then tied it up into the tree. I have a little bit of a weight on it to help hold the, uh, the noose straight down so it can get used to being in that position. Later I'm going to actually kind of put a little glue on it and I'll show you that. But right now what I'm doing is I'm actually bringing in a, some variations to the colors and I'm using some Tamiya Buff uh, paint to paint all of the tops of the boulders. Now the nice part about this is you don't need to be careful. Just kind of slather it on if there are spots that don't get paint it's no big deal it's it becomes automatically it becomes a highlight so i'm just going around painting the rocks this buff color to give them a little bit of a, a distinction and later we'll go ahead and apply some weathering powders to them so like i said i wanted to kind of lock down that noose and uh, the best thing I could think of to do was to just uh, drip some of my scene setting solution on the, the, the hemp itself and uh, kind of run it up and down the cord and, and whatnot. Not only would this help kind of lock it into place, uh, it would help it retain its shape and also maybe get rid of a little bit of the fuzzies it had. Uh, I burnt most of them off with a lighter, really a, a fast uh, pass. But this is taking care of all the rest of it, and so that's going to lock up our noose uh, that's hanging from our hangman's tree. Okay, everything is really looking very, very good in my opinion. Uh, we've brought the star of the show back in, and it's looking fantastic, if I do say so myself. And now I've got this mat, and it's like a terrain mat, and you can use it all as one piece. Or you can do like I'm doing, and you can just kind of cut it up and remove the, the grassy uh, clumps. So I'm just taking a little pair of sharp scissors, cutting them off the base, and then I'm going to glue them into my scene, and that'll give it a little bit uh, nicer of a look. And I'll scatter these around randomly. If you have like a, a four-year-old, this is where they come in handy because... Random is the key, and nobody's more random than a four-year-old, so maybe bring your four-year-old in and have them tell you where to put the clumps of grass. Uh, but you really want to not use any rhythm to it. Uh, just put them where they have to go and be done with it. Okay, so we're going to try and get this frame back on over the tree and hope that we actually didn't build ourselves out of being able to fit it back into the frame um, and that we're not going to require a lot of major surgery to, to get this thing back on here. So we just kind of hooked it over the tree and we're going to set it down over the, uh, the, the diorama and 
I think it's fitting perfectly and looking great, by the way. So we'll go ahead and uh, put it up on its side here and pop it the rest of the way in so that we can go ahead and hot glue the base into the frame. As the hot glue is going to be the only thing holding this in, I'm using good Gorilla Hot Glue, uh, Gorilla Glue Hot st Glue Sticks, and I'm putting a bunch of it on all the way around to make sure that this never ever falls out. Okay, I'm getting ready to put some of uh, this vegetation around the outer edges of the diorama, and all that white stuff there is it's just PVA glue. And so I've kind of preformed this piece of vegetation. And I'm just kind of sticking it into the glue and letting it extend out of the scene and onto the frame. And if you remember, I talked about breaking that fourth window. That, that's the intention here. I'll also, while I'm doing this, uh, apply a few rocks out onto the frame itself. Now here's a fun little tip. If you look dead center in the scene, you'll see some uh, foliage and stuff. That's just Italian seasoning. Yeah, so heavily around the base of the tree and near to the tree, I sprinkled down the Italian seasoning right out of the kitchen, and then I locked it down with seam glue. I also took some of my uh, MIG uh, weathering uh, pigments, and I uh, dusted all of the rocks to give them a little bit of more of a dusty feel and to add a little bit of color uh, I actually used a, uh, a kind of a reddish-brown brick color to, to just give them a little emphasis. Okay, so we're about done here. Uh, all we have to do is finish up the skeleton. We're painting him uh, kind of a bone white. And then we're going to weather him using a little bit of a wash, uh, paint in his details, uh, pose and glue him into the scene, and then we can call this thing uh, done. All right, I guess it's time to quit dwaddling and take a look at the final project. And uh, I hope you uh, love it as much as I do. I think it came out great. And uh, I encourage you to just go out and have some fun with these things. That's the key to a good diorama, is having fun, letting your imagination run wild, and just getting out there and doing it. So... I hope you like this video and I hope you love the final result. Well, there you have it, the vignette for the Boot Hill Express. Now, some might want to call it a diorama. Some could, could use a vignette or whatever. I differentiate. A diorama is bigger, and the model is just a little piece of it, whereas a vignette is more just a supporting character to display your piece on. And that's kind of what I felt this was. But, you know, some could argue that maybe it's just a diorama. Either way... It's a ton of fun. It's a chance for you to uh, let your hair down and just really be imaginative and have a lot of fun with it. And I think it came out really fantastic. I so, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, click the little bell, and all that other rigmarole that goes with it. Because I'll tell you what, that's the one thing you can do for me that shows me how much you enjoy the videos and really benefits me a lot. So I, I would be very, very grateful if you would do those things. If you have any questions or comments, please ask them down below. And with this project, I'm sure you're going to have plenty of questions. Fire away. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Okay, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions. I'm going to get out of here. Until next time, I hope you have a nice, beautiful, wonderful day in the air conditioning and not out in the barren desert. Until next time, be good.